begin. Thank you all for joining us and welcome to the Create the Vote <coughs> Electoral Candidates Forum on Arts and Culture. Um, I'm David Green, Executive Director of the Cultural Alliance of Fairfield County. This is the second in a continuing series of five candidate forums that are being held under the umbrella of the Connecticut Arts Alliance's Create the Vote Connecticut campaign. So the Connecticut Arts Alliance is a statewide membership nonprofit building the political, financial, and grassroots support to strengthen the arts across Connecticut. And Create the Vote Connecticut is a campaign to bring the role of the arts and culture in the economic and spiritual life of the state to the attention of our lawmakers and legislative candidates. So as part of the campaign, the Arts Alliance sent five question questionnaires to all legislative candidates in the state. And in our area, there were 76 candidates, in, that is in coastal Fairfield County. Of those 76, 18 completed their questionnaires. And of these, we invited six to take part in tonight's forum. And I also want to thank, by the way, Angela Whitford, the former executive director of the Cultural Alliance and current board member of the Connecticut Arts Alliance um, for helping in this effort. So um, if you could just acknowledge yourselves when I introduce you, um, the candidates tonight are in alphabetical order. Sen State Senator Will Haskell, a Democrat, Senate District 26 that covers Wilton, Ridgefield, Reading, Bethel, and parts of New Canaan and Westport. Uh, welcome, Will. Uh, State Senator Tony Huang, uh, who I believe is yet to appear. Tony is a Republican for Senate District 28 that covers Fairfield, Easton, Newtown, um, and parts of Westport and Weston. State Senator Alex Kasser, a Democrat, uh, Senate District 36, covering Greenwich and parts of Stamford and New Canaan. Welcome, Alex. Um, Thank you. Michelle Lapine McCabe, Democrat, Senate District 28, uh, Fairfield, Eastern Newtown, and parts of Westport and Weston. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you very much. Uh, State Representative Dave Rutigliano, Republican, House District 123, uh, representing Trumbull. Welcome, Dave. And Patricia Zuccaro, Republican, House District 143, parts of Weston and Wilton. Welcome, Patricia. Thank you. Good evening. So asking the five questions that were asked on the question are members of the Cultural Alliance of Fairfield County and constituents living and working within the districts represented by our candidates. So they will introduce themselves, but um, let me just make an initial introduction in the order in which they'll be asking the questions. Um, we have Nadia, Nadia Martinez, an artist, teacher, and curator from Greenwich. Thank you for being with us, Nadia. Diane Jellaret, the executive director of the Norwalk Historical Society. Welcome, Diane. Duvian Montoya, an artist from Easton. Welcome, Duvian. Ed Libinati, the executive director of the Summer Theatre of New Canaan. Welcome, Ed. And last but certainly not least, Rina Bacala, director of the Department of Economic and Community Development from the town of Trumbull. So each candidate will have up to two minutes to answer the questions. And um, the audience is invited to enter questions in the chat box. So please open your chat. Um, and if there is time, we will put your questions to the candidates at the end of the session. So that's it from me and I will turn it over to Nadia. Thank you, David. Hi, I'm Nadia Martinez. Um, and I'm, um, Pleased to be here tonight. Uh, so my, the first question is um, your personal connection to the arts and um, 
The pandemic has been challenging for so many in Connecticut and in so many ways. How have you personally benefited from the arts or creative expressions in the last few months? And what local art experiences have you missed the most during this shutdown? So, um, Senator Haskell? Sure, thank you so much for the question, Nadia, and, and thank you to the Cultural Alliance for bringing us together. I'm really looking forward to this conversation and, and honored to share the stage with the other candidates. Um, the arts were a huge part of growing up in Fairfield County for me. As, as a graduate of Staples High School, I'm tremendously proud of their theater program. I was the president of the Staples Players, and I can say all my best friends came from those productions. Uh, you know, I think that we need the arts now more than ever. Our world is filled with so much bad news. There's so much, uh, not only divisiveness, but real trauma. And I think that the arts, uh, at least I've seen personally, it's, it's a method for so many of healing and of coming together. These days, that doesn't always mean in person, but there have been some amazing things that happen virtually. And I've been so inspired to see how the uh, cultural institutions in my district have rallied to this moment, whether it's the remarkable theater figuring out how to present uh, uh, movies in an outdoor venue and give uh, actually paying jobs to those who have disabilities, or whether it's the, um, the Ridgefield Playhouse, which has adapted their uh, productions time and time again to meet each new phase of reopening. First it was virtual, then it was outside, and now they're even starting to provide present some indoor uh, moments that really do bring people together, together, give them a reason to laugh and smile again. I'm really looking forward to continuing to support the arts, not just because it's good for the economy and it's the right thing to do, but it's what makes this community so special. And it was such a huge part of my upbringing here in, Fair, here in Westport. Thank you so much, uh, Senator Castro. Um, uh, Senator Kayser, the same question for you. Oh, hi. Well, I would say that I have relied on the arts to actually uh, lift my spirit and to remind me of all the beautiful things that are created by human beings, even when we're at home and isolated uh, during this pandemic. So um, the one thing I have really missed is live theater. And that was um, a very big part of my life before. And I hope it will come back soon um, and I look forward to that in New Canaan and elsewhere. But um, I would just say that, uh, you know, the arts were something that I grew up with and my family always sort of fed me art as it is a, it is a nurturing substance. And um, my family just believes that art is the, um, is the highest expression of humanity. And um, my grandparents who lived through World War II and saw horror upon horror when they walked out of Hungary, which was their homeland, with literally nothing except carrying their two children, they took with them everything that they had learned and all the passion that they felt for art, and they rebuilt their lives and made art a central part of it. And so that's, that's what I grew up um, understanding, is that art is actually sustenance and it feeds the soul and um and one of the most incredible experiences i had during this pandemic in the last few months was witnessing a community um a community art project really in downtown stanford a group of citizens and activists and artists got together and they planned a street mural and they um and they put it together and it was just an in, just incredible to watch them create this. And then of course the result was just simply magnificent. So there's something about community getting together and creating art together that is just so, so powerful. Thank you so much, uh, Senator Kayser. Um, and I see that um, Senator Juan just uh, joined. Um, I will give him a little bit of time for him to, okay, great. How are you? I'm good, sorry to be late. Thank you. Um, so I'm asking the first question right now and I, I can ask you right now or a little bit uh, later if you prefer. Sure, I'm ready to go. Thank you for having me. Thank you, thank you. Um, so the first question I'll repeat it is, um, 
your personal connection to the arts. Uh, the pandemic has been challenging for so many in, Con in Connecticut and in so many ways. How have you personally benefited from the arts or created creative experience, expressions in the last few months? And what local art experiences have you missed the most during this shutdown? All right, right into the question. Um, you know, thank you again for having me. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be here. The arts are such an integral part of our community um, and COVID has impacted every part of it from the standpoint of um, the health and concerns of people, but also the economics. Uh, I, I think the real challenge that we see is the fact that um, twofold. I, I think the, 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 the economic impact of Broadway being shut down, all of our local um, entertainment venue and, and, and museums have all been dramatically impacted. And it has impacted not only the artists themselves and, and the organizations, but it also knowing the arts impact on, on a uh, kind of a, 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 you know, domino effect throughout all of our small businesses, restaurants, uh, venues and stores when people go to those events. It, it really has been a devastating impact. And I know that because as part of the uh, PUA, which helps a lot of self-employed individuals, um, we have been just been overwhelmed with self-employed artists that literally has not had work for many a months and have had no outlet. So I, I think economically from what the arts bring to the economic of, of our community is been dramatic. I think the other critical factor is the art through its museums and performances and the very aspect of, of expression is sorely needed in this COVID pandemic of isolation and, and just quarantine. So, mm -hmm. you know, for me, uh, it, it's, it's those type of perspectives where art has, has really been at the forefront in my mind. Uh, and, and the last question you asked about the impact of arts on me. You know, I grew up in a um, urban inner city high school and I still remember this example where a, a brilliant teacher suggested to all, all of their students, uh, inner city students, uh, individuals that did not have all the opportunities um, uh, and they suggested bringing Shakespeare as a performing arts venue. And I will tell you, the, 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 the love of Shakespeare from the people that got exposed to it has carried them to this day. These are friends that I kept from high school, and, I, and it's far too many years ago. But to this day, they have appreciated language. They have pre appreciated the performing arts. Um, art I mean, has- Sorry to interrupt you, but uh, your two minutes is way up. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you so much, uh, um, Senator Juan, for your answer. Um, Ms. Uh, uh, McCabe. I thank you all so much. I'm so excited that the Cultural Alliance is hosting uh, this forum. So my first career is actually in the arts. My bachelor's and my master's degree are both in art history. And I worked in museum in museums as a curator before shifting gears once I started having children. And so I, the arts runs in my blood and I actually have a notebook with lists of different dances, dance performances and art exhibitions and theater performances that I write down because I wanna go see them and experience them for myself. And um, my three boys will also attest to the number of times that I have dragged in some cases them to any any kind of performance that I can from the opera which they managed to ruin for me on more than one occasion and uh, the Broadway shows that we've had the pleasure of seeing in Connecticut and other performances in Connecticut which is so wonderful because there are so many incredible cultural venues here that are also more affordable than they are in other places so what that means is it makes the arts a lot more accessible to families uh, to be able to enjoy. Uh, I've tried my darndest 
to uh, enjoy online versions of the things that I love so much. And it's certainly better than nothing, but it reminds me every day now that it's such a communal experience that having people with you when you're experiencing the arts, no matter what it is, just it's another dimension to the performance. Uh, and it's hard to have the same experience. And it's also very much about having that three dimensional in reality experience of the arts as well that a screen, even a movie in your house does not replicate. Mm -hmm. There's something visceral that's missing. So I would say overall, I miss that. And then in particular, I especially miss the outdoor arts festivals so much. In fact, this paint, this uh, print right behind me, I purchased in Westport at the outdoor arts festival. And um, I love surrounding myself with art and I really miss the opportunity to talk to artists mm -hmm. in person and purchase their amazing uh, creative expression. Thank you so much. Uh... Uh, Ms. McCabe. Uh, Representative uh, Rutigliano. Hi, thanks for having me. I just had a second there to unmute. Um, I really appreciate you uh, having the forum. So as many know that my, my job is a chef, we chefs feel like frustrated artists or we feel like we're part at least of the art community. What others do with sculpture and canvas, sometimes we would, we would do with food and flavor. So I, I think it gives us a different perspective or an appreciation for the arts. So uh, I think the arts are super important to Connecticut. Uh, mine, like Will, started in high school as happenstance. I got involved with the theater club. and uh, Our first production was South Pacific, and I was just the sound guy. But it really did start a long love of live theater, uh, which really took hold when my sister, when we were small, dragged us into New York City to the TKTKS booth. You know, we used to get the half price tickets and she bought us standing room only tickets to the, it was the, it turned out to be the original production of Dream Girls, which to this day is the most remarkable thing I've ever seen in my entire life. So we miss most live theater in all forms. We go to just about every theater that's in Connecticut. Right before the pandemic, we were at the Warner Theater in Torrington, uh, watching uh, Jekyll and Hyde, which happens to be one of my more favorite plays. So the faster we can get this back going and the faster we can get the engine of creativity and arts flowing, I think it's good for everybody, not just the artists, but everybody around in the state of Connecticut, including our economy. So any part that I can do to help them or help these theaters and these artists survive long enough to get through this very difficult time, I think we as a state, uh, both economically and sort of part of our fiber or our being should help in any way we can. So thanks. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Representative uh, Ruti Briano. Um, and Ms. Sukaro. Uh, yes, hi, thank you. I wanna uh, thank again the Cultural Alliance for hosting this event. Um, I'm very happy to be here and I'm really excited to talk about uh, the arts. Um, so the arts have, has a tremendous impact on our communities. And I've personally benefited from the arts or creative expression every day in every possible outlet. Uh, during COVID with the inability to go places, I found myself seeking creativity in non-conforming ways. Uh, for example, I started you know, admiring TV commercials. Um, and you know, TV commercials are not your typical avenue for artistic discovery. However, you know, someone spent a significant amount of time and energy and COVID allowed me to slow down and appreciate the very basic nature and creativity. Um, I also had the ability during COVID to, uh, one of my favorite types of art is uh, street art. And, uh, and so uh, it's one of my favorite forms of expression. And during COVID, you were able to sort of drive around to neighborhoods and see other forms um, so I really enjoyed that. And uh, recently, there's, you know, there's been so much creative um, opportunity for new creative ways to express art. And the other day, uh, I saw um, in the backyard of a, a family house, I saw a big white sheet up um, and they had, they were projecting videos and movies back there. And so it was just nice to see, um, you know, 
they they're there's such joy for this and they were able to to have it right in their backyard and i don't think without covid we would necessarily have that opportunity thank oh, you thank you so much uh miss uh, kura uh, zucaro thank you <laughs> okay um thanks very much so next diane diane you need to unmute <laughs> I'm Diane Delorette, the Executive Director of the NARC Historical Society and Museum. And the question uh, that I have is, uh, is the, the arts plus economic recovery. Connecticut can't recover without the arts. Arts and culture are key for Connecticut's economic recovery. Creative industries pump $9 billion into the state and account for 3.5% of Connecticut's total economy. Our nonprofits, arts organizations support 23,000 jobs, generate 800 million annually, and return $7 back in tax revenue for every $1 invested by the state. How will you help harness the power of the arts for Connecticut's economic recovery? And I'll start with you, Senator Haskell. Sure. Like I said earlier, investing in the arts isn't just the right thing to do. It's also also the smart thing to do for our economy. I've seen that up close and personal uh, with the flagship producing theaters. The Westport Country Playhouse, famous in the region for not just bringing in touring productions, but actually hiring so many folks to mount their own productions, which are so remarkable and draw so many folks from around the area into Westport. Um, so. I'm a big believer that you can't just talk the talk. We've got to walk the walk as we're making those tough budgetary decisions. And obviously, hard days lie ahead of us in Connecticut. We're facing a $2.1 billion budget deficit. We're going to have to use our rainy day fund to plug holes as we spend more than ever on PPE and testing and transportation for students. But we can't possibly let arts fall by the wayside. Because as I go out and I knock doors and I meet families who are choosing to move to this community, they tell me time and time again that, of course, they're drawn to the public schools here, but they're also drawn to the rich cultural institutions, the Aldrich Museum in Ridgefield, the, uh, the um, of course, the, the theaters in New Canaan. The, uh, there's just so much here to appreciate and admire that uh, I think that it's part of what makes Fairfield County so special and the state has to have the back of those who are uh, so creative but are struggling right now during these tough economic times. Thank you, Senator Haskell. Uh, Senator Wong, um, your response? Well, it, it's, you know, this is the fun part. I think we're all very much in agreement in supporting the arts. Mm -hmm. The economics, as I mentioned in, in my intro that went all along is, is truly knowing the, 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 the impact that arts not only has on the performance side, but the economic side. Mm -hmm. But I also want to encourage the fact that arts is all encompassing. It is not just a big theater. It is the, the street performers, the, 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 the opportunity for free expression. Uh, I think in these kind of environments where people are so emotionally wrapped up, um, art, particularly for me, music, has been such a, a, a all-encompassing, soothing tonic. And so for me, it's, it's important to, to understand the economics are, are, are overwhelming. When, when you start thinking, as I mentioned, Broadway just announced that they will not be open until May. I think about the economic impact of so many of our talented performing arts artists that choose to live in Fairfield County that, that no longer working. Um, it, it's really a devastating challenge. But when I talk about the economics in regards to what we can do in Hartford, it has to account for all aspects, not just simply a few, but we have to encompass all arts. And it's not just the performing arts. We have to be conscious of museums because I consider arts from the standpoint of our history and, and, and the impact it has in, in educating and, and invigorating people's thoughts and ideas, that is all encompassing. So we have to understand that. And it is good public policy because it's a win-win. Thank you. Um, Senator Kayser. Hi. Um, it's Senator Kasser. Just, Kasser I, that's okay. No problem. Um, 
you know, I, I echo my colleagues. I, arts are not just the, the right thing to do, they are the smart thing to do um, economically to support the arts. And I think any of us that, uh, that represent communities that have art establishments in them know that. So for instance, in Stanford, um, the Palace Theater is a destination that brings world-class um, acts to the city of Stanford. And that creates a thriving downtown economy. And, and as you said, Diane, every dollar that's invested reaps $7 in terms of, well, in terms of tax returns, but also in terms of the local economy. For every dollar that's spent on a ticket, people are spending at least four or five or six dollars, you know, multiplied times that on dinner and parking and tips. And that goes directly into the local economy. So, um, you know, I, I am very proud to represent a district that really um, not only believes in the arts, but also invests in the arts. And we have some pretty exciting projects that are coming down the pike here. Just the other day, I went to a groundbreaking ceremony for the new Bruce Museum, which is going to be not just a mecca for, for art and for modern art and history, but it's really going to be a resource for surrounding communities um, and a very vibrant uh, learning and cultural center for students from Westchester, from all over Connecticut who are going to come here and learn and grow. So, you know, I don't think of arts as something that belongs to the immediate community. These establishments are, some, are really a gift to society and to um, and to anyone who can come and enjoy and thrive. And another exciting project that's coming down the pike in New Canaan is, um, is their new library, which they're planning. And I know that's not normally, well, literature is one of the arts, of course, but, um, but I think that their vision and the way these, um, these establishments are being planned. They're not just confined to, you know, to one discipline. They're really being designed as community gathering places because we recognize now more than ever that people need to come together. They don't just want to come together. They need to come together to, uh, to learn and grow and to remind us of, you know, who we are and what our, what our best selves are capable of. So, I will do anything in my power to support uh, and invest in the arts. Thank you. Uh, Ms. McCabe? Thank you. Uh, we certainly, I think, are all in agreement that uh, we need to be investing in the arts. But I want to add there are some other things that I think we can do that can harness the power of the arts for the Connecticut's economic recovery as well. So we just are experiencing right now a dramatic influx of new residents here to Connecticut. Residents, many of whom are coming from New York City, who are used to a steady diet, whether they take advantage of it or not, of arts all around them. So I think the state can help invest in an education campaign. All of these new residents need to learn about all of the fantastic resources, cultural institutions, meet Connecticut artists, like we could be hosting, even online, we could be hosting uh, in partnership potentially with our realtors who know who our new residents are. We should be harnessing that so that we're starting to build excitement around the arts in Connecticut because these folks have no idea, but I think that they're fertile ground that we should be uh, taking advantage of. We need to speak to all of the participants in the arts community to ask them, how can we leverage state resources so they can open safely? Mm -hmm. It's not just funding the arts to get us through this time, but even more to the effect, how can we actually generate revenue for you doing what you do best, which is all of the arts that you participate in? I can't think of a better group of people than artists in the arts community to figure out how to creatively activate new spaces that are safer, but can welcome new audiences to them to experience the arts in new ways. I mean, who better to do that than you all? And then finally, I think it would be really interesting if we start exploring what um, a arts, uh, what a, uh, we have museum passes in libraries which are amazing. And by the way, they are a completely underutilized resource. 
um, not by me, but by other people, because I love them. It's a great way to make the arts affordable. Can we do something similar with theater, with dance, uh, with any number of art forms? Why are we just limiting it to museums? I think that some of it is cultivating interest, maybe working with the arts community to be able to offer special discounting tickets. I mean, part of what we have an opportunity to do here in the time of COVID is also to expand who our audiences are. How do we make it a more equitable space so that more people can enjoy it? Mm -hmm. uh, so I think there's a lot of room for, for creativity and some of it is for the state to be responsive to that because sometimes the answer is in helping, you know, purchase cleaning supplies. Like there, there's a lot of different ways that we can help. Thank you, Ms. Piquet. Um, Representative Reticliano. Uh, thank you. It's, it's rare that my name gets pronounced correctly, by the way, and that everybody else's doesn't. So I just want to let you know that it, it's, I'm kind of enjoying it. I appreciate that. So I really liked everybody's answers. I think every idea is a great idea. Um, I really look at the, the problem with the arts and theater as sort of a twofold uh, issue. A, we have an emergency. We have an emergency right now. These folks need funding. These folks need to survive. We need to do what we can to get them over the hurdle till once again, they can all be opening and operating and making money in the normal way. So um, I, I would like to find a funding mechanism for that. One of the ways I would think is to take a look at, we have this tourism account, account that we created where some of the taxes off of hotel rooms and other um, events and venues a portion of that was supposed to go into a tourism account to sort of help us draw more people into Connecticut. Years past, it was consistently swept out of and used for other reasons, but I think we sort of haven't done that over the past couple of years. So maybe there's some money in there that we could divert and um, help these folks immediately. Maybe that might be one of the funding mechanisms that helps everybody get over the hump because technically they, these all are tourist destinations. So mm -hmm. it's not too out of the realm. The other way, on an ongoing basis, we are all better when Connecticut is thriving and our economy is growing. It is, you know, the arts and, you know, including my business, a lot of businesses, we're all sort of in the disposable income business. And the more money people have of their own in a growing, thriving, moderately taxed environment, the more maybe they can all spend on the arts, theater, museums, and other things of, of a cultural nature. So I do look at it as a two-way. I'm certainly not opposed to the emergency funding mechanism. Uh, I, I feel it's appropriate. I feel there's so much value to these sort of organizations and you know everything from the theaters to the museums to you name it, that it, it's worthy of emergency uh, funding. But then we have to sort of have a, a growing economy where everybody could thrive moving forward. Well, thank you. All right, Ms. Zaccaro, your, your turn. Yes, thank you. Um, Providing access to the arts is the, is the number one response um, to ensuring we harness the power of the arts for Connecticut's economic development. I agree with um, many of the other panelists here tonight. Um, we've come up with really great ideas. But uh, for me, the arts must be a central component to the plan to reopen Connecticut. Um, we've been going through phases and it's imperative that we make sure that the arts are a, a, a vital component to that. And I would like to see uh, a safe and forward thinking um, way, uh, creatively, how we can expand and make sure that the arts are incorporated into our reopening. I agree that investing in the arts is a win-win and, um, and it's, you know, it's imperative that we make sure that it's, it's, it's in the process with our reopening. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sakaro. Great. Um, next, Duvian. Yes, hello. Thank you to the candidate for um, coming on to this phone call. My name is Duvian Montoya, artist, painter, muralist, living in Easton, Connecticut. I'm also co-founder of the Artist Collective of Westport and the St. Philip's Artist Guild. And my question deals with uh, healing and rebuilding in the arts. Creativity helps us process loss, fight loneliness, and, and create vibrant, resilient communities that attract and retain residents, business, businesses, and visitors. What do you think is an important role for the arts and culture to play in healing and rebuilding the social fabric of our cities and towns? And I'll start with uh, Senator, Senator Haskell, please. I've been really inspired by some of the things I've 
the pleasure of participating in or even sometimes just driving by uh, during this pandemic. It's also been a moment for um, uh, in redoubling our commitment to racial justice and equality. I represent a district of about 100,000 people. Less than 2% of my constituents are black. That's, that's a, a moral injustice that speaks to Connecticut's long history of racial segregation. And we're finally starting to grapple with that unfortunate history. And amazingly and, and excitingly, we're doing it actually in really artistic ways. In the wake of George Floyd's murder, there's a arts institution on Weston Road in Westport called Beachwood Arts. They put up a bunch of just absolutely blank uh, black lawn signs. In a campaign year, it's easy for lawn signs to get drowned out, but these were remarkable because there was nothing on them. And they invited artists to come and, and say something, do something, take it home, create a project, and put it back up. It was amazing what folks came up with, specifically around the topic of arts and uh, racial injustice and inequity. So, you know, that's just one example out of so many of how the arts community has come together to try to engage in these hard conversations and create a forum where people can be a little bit more comfortable getting outside of their shell and talking about these issues that have been so long overlooked. Another example is up in Ridgefield. I was really lucky that the Arts Council convened, again, Ridgefield Playhouse, the Aldrich Museum, uh, the, uh, actually the, the local choir and, and uh, chamber orchestra, and so many other groups to have a conversation about how they can create a more inclusive environment, how they can, when schools are reopened, go back into the classroom and forge those difficult conversations, conversations about racial inequity. Not all of it's playing out in public. Some folks are just taking up art at home, not that it's anything groundbreaking, and normally I don't put it on camera, but just to the left, I've been learning and how to play the piano. So I think in, in this pandemic, we're all um, breaking out of our shell a little bit, learning to do new things to, uh, to help address that isolation and to take part in long overdue conversations about how to build a more inclusive state. And, uh, you know, I'm really inspired by what the organizations here in the 26th district are doing. I'm going to redouble my commitment to making sure that once again, we have their back through the Department of Economic and Community Development. You know, just in the, in the last budget we passed, I fought for more than $15,000 of funding for our local cultural institutions. I know that funding is actually needed now more than ever before. So we've got to continue fighting to fill the budget holes that I know so many institutions are facing. Great, thank you for that. And I uh, was part of the Beachwood Project. So thank you for reaching out about that. So um, Senator Huang, please, next. The arts is a cathartic healing for all of us. I, I think we've talked about it repeatedly. And as I said, I'm excited to be here to reiterate my support, but also recognizing that art isn't just for one group or one age group. That in light of this COVID pandemic and in light of the national toxic uh, political environment, music, art, theater, all aspect of arts is healing. And, and I, I can't say that enough. Um, and, and with that said, you know, we need it to feed the soul and we need it more than ever. Um, and I see the museum, I, I see the, the uh, art pieces behind you. Uh, it's eye catching. Um, and, and I think ultimately as humans, I, I remember um, the, the thing that separate us from a civilized society is truly an appreciation of the arts. And, and we need that more than ever in this pandemic. Um, we need to feed the soul. Great, I agree with that. <laughs> Senator Caso, please. Thanks. Um, well, again, I echo my colleagues. We do need art to bring us together, to heal the soul, to build bridges um, and to build community and to really remind us of what uh, being human is all about. And it's not about taking sides and it's not about um, vilifying other people or blaming other people. It's about living and, uh, and creating joy and creating beauty and finding beauty in darkness and finding good attributes in other people, even if we disagree with them. So, um, and I'll just go back to my, the uh, first anecdote that I shared with you about the community art project that happened uh, in Stanford a few months ago, which was a street mural, a Black Lives Matter street mural that was um, created. And it was simply magnificent. And how it brought people together, um, all sorts of different people and clergy and, and uh, just everybody came together to celebrate that, um, that event 
and the spirit behind it. And then the actual result was simply breathtaking and it, and it lives, it still lives on. That's the beauty of art. It just it creates, people create it, but it has its own life and it lives on. So um, I hope that we see more things like that, more community events that are creative. Um, I tried to create something like that in Greenwich, very different culture here in Greenwich. Um, Black Lives Matter was not uh, something that our town hall wanted to endorse. So we have a long way to go in terms of um, broadening our culture and making it truly inclusive because it's not words that make um, a town or community or state inclusive, it's actions. So that's what I'm trying to do. Great. Keep on trying Greenwich, thank you. Uh, Ms. McKay, please. Uh, I love the event that took place in Stanford. And I appreciate Senator Kasser sharing that uh, experience with us because I think it would be an amazing opportunity in every town first to have an arts council and an arts council that doesn't actually just talk about the arts, but is also um, is part of integrating the arts into everything that goes on in a community from education to housing to commerce and retail that uh, and, and this is a perfect example also of not only allowing the arts to be a communal experience as a spectator, but actually engaging the public to participate in the art form itself. I think it's too frequent that the arts are seen as ancillary or only the province, for example, when you get to high school, someone that wants to be in the arts as a career. And then all of a sudden it's not important for other students to participate in it. Um, that's where art as healing is really important. And I think that every human should feel comfortable with some form of creative expression in their lives that isn't necessarily meant for everybody. And I think when we are too narrowly focused on, oh, only you know, students that are planning on going to art school should take art classes and, those, and that we shouldn't fund it as much because it's not a career option for everyone, we've already missed the mark altogether. And I think the more that artists can activate the spaces of our towns and bring people in to actually perform the art with them, I think would be absolutely an incredible place of healing, especially because again, it's a communal experience and you're building community and that's, and you're also able to tap into something that all of us are missing. Uh -huh. So um, to be able to bring us together like that, I think would be a really exciting opportunity. Yeah, thank you. Um, Representative Rotigliano, please. Yes, um, that was a very good answer, uh, Michelle. I, I like that. Um, I really appreciate everybody's answer and perspective on this question. I must admit that when I read it and I answered it, I sort of had a different, uh, a different thing in my head. So I've been heavily involved, uh, I don't know how, it was just because in the opioid crisis since I've been elected. It, and, and then I read, I read an article which led me to a podcast which led me to a bunch of articles about how art therapy was having such a remarkable effect on people in addiction. So I thought, is it when arts and healing and rebuilding, I said, well, geez, I think this is something that we should explore. Maybe this is something as a state that we should invest money in to help people. I was amazed that the army of all places had done the study where art therapy had sort of the same success rate as cognitive and or uh, med medical therapy and beds. And it was really, really interesting. And um, I, so I, I thought that's something that we should explore as a society that maybe we could help people who are struggling so mightily where art can, as the question said, heal and rebuild. I thought, wouldn't this be great if this all worked? And also one of my favorite things that I do every year is that we have a little senior art show and these folks are so vibrant. Their art is so great. They're all really into it. It, it has this sort of healing power. It's like cocoon. They're all younger and their art is awesome. Um, I end up buying a bunch of them and sticking them up in the restaurants because I like them so much. So I think art really on many levels has a way of helping people and rejuvenating people. And I would like to explore that further not being a particularly good artist myself, I'm saying that maybe you <laughs> folks should do it. 
Thank you very much. Great answer. And um, I do think it does tap into the soul of everyone who tries it. So, Ms. Zuccaro, please. Zucaro, yes. Um, <clears throat> I believe that arts plays an indispensable role, role in our culture, social fabric, and communities. As we start to reopen Connecticut, I would like to see more opportunities for the arts to flourish. Um, opportunities for people to come together to share in the arts. It's so true that the arts can fight against loss and loneliness um, in really unpredictable ways. And allowing individuals to be creative can certainly bring our communities together. And it's been apparent through this pandemic that we need our community. Um, we need that interaction and, and the creative ways to interact with them has become apparent as well. Um, it's been pretty amazing these past few months to see how people can create art um, in ways we wouldn't have thought and in ways that have definitely brought us together. Thank you. Great. So thank you. Um, next is um, Ed, Ed Livinati. Hi, I'm Ed Livinati. Uh, I'm the executive director for the Summer Theater of New Canaan. Uh, the Summer Theater of New Canaan is now going into its 18th year. Uh, it's frightening to realize that our we, uh, we present professional theater, Broadway shows, uh, theater for young audiences. We have educational programs for high school, for middle school, and for uh, special needs programs. Uh, we do uh, extensive outreach to children at risk and to seniors. So we kind of touch all bases and all areas of families and personalities. Uh, and uh, so, uh, uh, this is a pretty critical uh, question I like to ask you know, all of our, our candidates. Excuse me, Ed, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm really having a difficult time hearing you. I apologize. Oh, okay. No, I'm kidding. How's this? Can you oh, hear me? Much better. Okay. <laughs> um, basically, the um, question we have here is uh, uh, on the arts. Uh, arts, how will the arts support racial and social justice? Um, the pandemic has deepened existing divides in Connecticut, particularly along the lines of race and class. The arts create shared experiences that can unite people and bridge divides to acknowledge the strength in our differences. Do you believe the arts can help build racial and social justice in Connecticut? If so, how? Uh, Senator Haskell, would you start please? Thank you. Sure, Ed, let me just say, I'm so inspired by the work that you guys do. I hear from so many high school students, particularly over the uh, you know summer months, before the pandemic, that they so enjoy their the experiences, the rich experiences that they get to partake in through the Summer Theater of New Canaan. And I guess that that's a, where I want to start with my answer. Um, my favorite, one of my favorite Roger and Hammerstein songs is "You've Got to Be Carefully Taught," and I think that that's uh, such a beautiful message about uh, racism and understanding and, and compassion. But I also think it applies to arts. I think you have to be carefully taught to love the arts, and I think we do a pretty good job in our school system. Um, but we've got to make sure that we're focused not just on the artists of today, but also of the artists of tomorrow and empowering them to really listen to one another and learn from one another. Cause that's, we're going to have, that's how we're going to bridge these, these divides. Um, at Staples high school, I, like I said, Staples, uh, I was very involved with Staples players. It was only when I got to college that I found out it was unusual that the largest student organization in terms of the number of folks who participated, I uh, was the theater group. I thought that that was true of every high school in America. It is certainly not, I soon learned. It's normally the, the football team or something like that. But at Staples, it was the theater group because this is a community that does have such a rich tradition of investments in the arts. And through the arts, we're able to build friendships and, and uh, forge connections across some really deep divides. That's got to continue and it's got to expand. Of course, we're limited now by what's happening in our schools due to the COVID-19 pandemic. But eventually, once students are back in school safely, we've got to make sure that arts is a part of the curriculum at every step. There's no age that's too young to begin having these interesting conversations and exposing students uh, to everything that the arts can provide. So um, I'm, I'm glad for the question. And, and Ed, so glad you're on the call. Oh, you're on, you're on mute again. Thank you. I guess I was turned off. Um, we, um, we tour shows to elementary schools across Connecticut, and uh, we start with kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth grade, and these children just soak it up. I mean, they can't get enough. They enjoy it so much to see live theater uh, and have storytelling in a creative and uh, dynamic way like that. So uh, I'm glad you appreciate it, and it's nice to talk to another thespian. Thank you. 
Um, Senator Wang, we hear from you. Thank you, but before we go, I, I, I want to acknowledge and welcome Representative Lucy Dathan, who's been in on uh, some of the points and have not had a chance to answer questions. Um, so I just wanted to welcome Representative Dathan. Uh, that being said, I, 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 I didn't know what the questions were, but I guess my intro kind of addressed my personal experience where arts has transcended and, and made differences in every child's life. Um, we in, in, in Fairfield County have done a great job in trying to expand the outreach of the services from Klein in, in, in Bridgeport to Fairfield Theater Company and, and, and having summer stock for, for our students throughout the region. And even, uh, you know, to go to the Martin Luther King performances that is at the Westport Playhouse in which young students from surrounding communities are able to perform. And in talking to them afterwards, the, 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 the experience and the thrill and, and the inspiration from a live performance at a theater that, that, that has such allure is, is experiences that transcend what you can teach. Uh, and, and that's what arts and, and, and the performances that you talk about do because at the end of the day, there are certain limits that you can only teach in books. The thrill of the performance and, and the bug that bites you when, when you experience the reaction of the crowd and, and, and the spotlight on you, it really is something that, that, that transcend all the challenges that we have. And it gives inspiration to individuals across all economics and all cycles and backgrounds. It really is, as I said repeatedly, it is an incredible unifying force, more than anything else. Thank you. Um, the, uh, you know, again, um, the arts, uh, how they support racial and social justice. Um, uh, Senator Kasser? Thank you. I, yes, the arts support racial and social justice, and they are the most effective way, again, of building bridges between people because it's not about who you are, where you're from, what your car you drive, or any of that nonsense. It's just about connecting on a human level, which we need to do a lot more of in this, um, in this day and age and in our culture. But I, I'm going to, if it's OK, I'm going to defer to my colleague, Lucy Dathan, because she hasn't had a chance to speak yet. And she, Will, and I all represent New Canaan. So we're all so proud of New Canaan Theater and everything that you do, Ed. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick it over to Lucy, if that's OK. Lucy, did you hear the question? Can I rephrase it, or are you fine? If you can go ahead and re, uh, re rephrase it, that'd be great. Oh, Thanks, sure. Ed. Uh, the arts uh, support racial and social justice. The pandemic has deepened existing divides in Connecticut, particularly along the lines of race and class. The arts create shared experiences that can unite people and bridge divides to acknowledge the strength in our differences. Do you believe the arts can help build racial, social justice in Connecticut? If so, how? Absolutely. That's a it's a great question. I think there's so many um, medians of the arts that can actually help um, build um, build this. You know, you look at not just theater, where you know we have as individuals, we we go and we experience the theater in in the in in the view of the actors and how that they portray, portray characters and situations. But also in, you know, the, um, you know, actual, you know, art and buildings. I know Senator Kasser talked about, you know, a lovely um, mural that she saw in, um, in Stanford and how that brings people into it and really gets people um, engaged in it. Uh, music is a, another fantastic way of um, really building bridges when you see music of different cultures and how music is a, a really common thing that helps bring people together. So um, I feel in an, in an age of COVID where, you know, these personal connections have really been lost and our ability to um, engage with people in that sort of level where, as Senator Kasser said, all of these other uh, noise and uh, abilities have gone away that, you know, the arts bring us together. Um, I did want to add that I am so happy to see you all come up to Hartford and testify 
and hear you in, in appropriations. I sit in the DECD subcommittee of appropriations and you all do a great job and you really um, put a good impression on our committee about how important the arts are. So thank you for your advocacy. Thank you very much. Um, Ms. McCabe, uh, would you like me to repeat the question or would you like to go ahead? I'm ready, thank you though. Um, I think that there's definitely a role for the arts to play. First and foremost, the arts is our pathway to empathy. When any of us are fully engaged in a book or a movie or a theatrical performance, uh, think about how many times you cry, you feel scared, you feel joy. We actually physically enter into these worlds where it allows us to experience an emotion that makes a personal connection to that experience. And I think one of the most important things that Connecticut arts communities can do is highlight the work of BIPOC musicians, artists, playwrights, etc. cetera, that we need to be ensuring that the performances that we put forth are representative and will allow audiences to feel empathy and to understand an experience that's very different from their own. Because honestly, until we can do that, bridge building is incredibly challenging. And I would also add, especially when we're talking about integrating all kinds of audiences into the work, we have to be sensitive to the diversity of our audiences. I'm a huge fan of the paintings of Kahindi Wiley. He's one of my favorites. And uh, I mentioned him to some of my colleagues who are BIPOC and they didn't know who he was. And I thought how unfair and unjust it was that I had the pleasure of experiencing his artwork and that they had not. And so I think that that's part of the back and forth that the arts community in Connecticut can really engage in. And I would love to see a commitment to highlight the works of artists of color uh, here in the state to cultivate the talent that's here in the state uh, and to bring in talent from elsewhere too so that we can expose the greater public to the amazing work that's being produced and has been produced in the past. Thank you. Um, on that line, most theaters uh, across the country and in Connecticut are starting to come up with their own DEI statements. That's diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, and it's so critical to how we proceed once we get back, you know, in the saddle, uh, sort of say, of presenting and, and promoting and presenting, creating, creating with, you know, uh, uh, a diverse team, you know, giving people opportunities that uh, we normally would take for granted uh, assuming we're making the right decision, you know, picking the best person for the job, but realizing there are many people for the job and to, and to, and to openly uh, explore that diversity and, uh, and inclusion. So um, right along with what you're saying, that seems to be the foundation of where many theaters are now moving um, uh, in that direction with their own statements and their own belief and philosophy. Um, Representative Vertigliano. Hi. Uh <laughs> I gotta tell you the truth, when I read this question, I read through it, I, 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 have a little, I come from a little bit of a different perspective, possibly. I grew up fairly lower middle class in a fully integrated neighborhood in Waterbury, a fully integrated high school. We just didn't really think that way. We were all equally poor and miserable and uh, we never really thought about anything else. What, so what I've done with my life really and my career is try to provide opportunity for people so that maybe they could advance themselves. So if there's a way that the state could support opportunities for all people of all colors, and I recognize that there's, you know, uh, some people are oppressed and held back and all that. I'm not saying that doesn't happen. I'm just saying that growing up, you know, we were all sort of equally miserable. What I mean is if we could support folks, give them an opportunity to express themselves or find a creative outlet for themselves that maybe they fall in love with and maybe they could turn that into a career or some sort of venture that they can move forward with, I would champion removing any barrier so that these folks can get the opportunity that they deserve. And that goes for all people. No, thank you. And the, the arts is a, a great place to start. Um, uh, Ms. Zaccaro. 
Thank you. So I answered this question uh, slightly different than uh, everyone else, but uh, to me, I definitely think arts, the art can help build racial and social injustice. Art can create countless emotions that can be effective in communicating a message. And art that is explicit, straightforward, and creative will leave a lasting impression on individuals. Uh, personally, I like art that isn't so straightforward. Uh, it has a powerful message, but it allows individuals to think outside the box and come to their own conclusions. And it doesn't nece necessarily have to be a painting. It could be a poem or a movie or music or dance. Um, I think that there are countless examples of how the arts have brought about social justice on a large scale and have made people aware of things that they weren't necessarily aware of before. And art is just amazing in the sense that it'll, uh, it opens people up to things that they wouldn't necessarily see on their own. Um, and I also think that you know community efforts play a critical role in, in expanding the shared experience. Um, and it, it, it unites people and, and bridges the divide. Thank you. Um, I'd like to add uh, one thing that uh, I appreciate your uh, uh, interpretation of TV commercials as art because in an <laughs> earlier life I was a TV director and TV commercial director. So uh, it was nice, nice to hear that, that it could be interpreted that way. Yes, thank you. It's <laughs> great. So I have to acknowledge that we are officially out of time, but if you can stay then um, I'm um, happy to, to keep us going. Um, I, um, um, Senator Haskell, do you have to leave? I so wish I could stay. I've got a debate in 10 minutes, unfortunately. Okay. Luckily, it's virtual, so I don't have to go very far. But thank you so much for having me. And, and I wish I could stay longer. But everybody knows I hope where to reach me. Please be in touch. I don't know Senator Kassa had to leave. Um, so um, let's... I, I uh, could stay for a couple, but if, if you could go to the questions, it might be uh, from... Are there any questions in the chat? I don't really have it open. Well, there's another very important question still to, our, to, still to answer, if you can stay. And uh, Lucy, if you would like to uh, step into Alex Cass's um, shoes um, for this last question, you, you're most welcome. Sure, they're hard shoes to fill, but I will try. <laughs> so let's turn to um, uh, Rena Bacala. Hi, I'm Rena. I'm the Economic and Community Development Director for the Town of Trumbull. Thank you for having me with you all today. Um, I found the discussion very interesting and, and positive, and so I appreciate that. Um, with 62% of artists unemployed and most arts organizations unable to reopen, the industry needs emergency support to recover and thrive. Connecticut's arts and culture sector has suffered an estimated $400 million in economic loss. Will you support specifically emergency funding to support the arts industry in Connecticut? And if so, what source of funding would you use and at what level? You know, Dave Rutigliano already started to address this specifically in, a, in another question, so I think I'd like to start with Dave if he wanted to just reiterate or elaborate. I was all muted up thinking I was going to be last, Rena. Um, I, th you know what? I reread that question as you were you were going through it, and I feel I kind of answered it in an earlier question. So I'd have to agree. I am in favor of emergency funding of some kind to support art and artists and theaters, you name it, to keep them going because we are in an emergency. I also think that we could tap into some of the tourism fund or some sort of special fund that we have existing so that there could be a pot of money that uh, we could use to get these organizations or keep these organizations alive so that they could be there for us when the economy returns. And as I said before, going forward, a growing, strong uh, uh, Connecticut economy with lots of disposable income for everybody is good for all of us. Um, you know, it's not the supermarket. It's not people have to go there. This is a little bit of discretionary, whether we like to think that or not. And we need people to have enough funds to spend it on us, uh, meaning artists, you, uh, the folks that you're referring to. So that's a little bit of a clumsy answer. I thought I answered it before, but I really do think that I wanted you to know from my perspective that your group or your area is so important that I do think that we should do something to keep everybody going. I really, really do. Thank you. 
Um, Senator Wang. Irina, um, the economics are, are daunting and, and the state of Connecticut with nearly $3 billion in deficit of a $20 million billion a budget is going to be a tremendous challenge. And, 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 but we should never ever forget the arts from a standpoint of our entities. And you have my commitment in that arena. But also I, I, I really wanna give a shout out to the artists and the performers that are equally struggling. Um, they, they are at their wits end. They, they, they can't work. They can't work anywhere. So we have to have extra consideration for those self-employed artists and, and support them in, in critical times of need. But to reopen, you know, we're in phase three of, of the reopening, but we're also seeing a, a slight uptick in regards to the infection numbers. So it's a delicate balance that we need to address so as we try to push forward and allow our, our important artistic organizations and museums to kind of reopen, we want to have to do it on a medically based, you know, fact-based opening. And we also need to consider that if they're going to happen open with, with guidelines and safety standards, that those protocols are accounted for to ensure that they have the highest level of safety. But we need to explore a, a balance that, that we are opening up these venues to allow businesses to start growing and our, biz, our, our, our artists to be able to work while maintaining the safest standards medically based. So it, it's a delicate balance. Uh, it, is government the only solution? Absolutely not. I think we all have to work together to be sure that you know, people need to, to, to feel comfortable going to those venues. You know, we could do everything we can and open it, but if there is not that confidence, a medical-based, fact-based solution and analysis, <laughs> the consumers are not gonna come back to these venues. So, it, 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 and, and we've seen that in the challenges that we're gonna encounter as we go to phase three. So it, it really is a, a closely tied ecosystem, but on a short-term basis, I think we have to support our our, our artistic entities, but we also have to support our, our, our talented artists because uh, it's a struggle even before the COVID pandemic for most of them. Great, um, Michelle McCabe. Hi, Rena, thank you so much. Um, absolutely, there's no reason why the arts community doesn't have access to the same funding, the same loans, the same emergency funding that every other industry in Connecticut does. And I will certainly support all efforts for that funding to be made available. Uh, I think the idea of tapping into the tourism agency is great. I also don't know how much funding the arts are getting from Connecticut Innovations, for example, or other economic development funding, but that certainly should be made available since they are a key economic driver in the state. And I also think that there's a lot that we can do to help arts organizations and artists pivot during this time. Is it possible, for example, to have a Connecticut streaming channel where theatrical performances can be made available that for a small membership fee, for example, people can enjoy uh, Connecticut local talent performing or doing whatever it was. I mean, I would pay for that with pleasure um, or an online marketplace. Like some of it is to be able to leverage um, an opportunity for collaboration across on these platforms to make sure that Connecticut consumers know where to buy Connecticut products to see Connecticut performances, et cetera. Um, Oh, and one other thing, I knew there was one other thing that I wanted to mention. It would be, I think, incredibly helpful if in the next session we pass the public option for health insurance, especially for our artist community. Uh, we need to have an affordable option so that health care is not something that you are not able to access. And I think that Kevin Lumbo's plan is an excellent one where we leverage the state's buying power to be able to make the same pricing and the great coverage available to artists and arts organizations. I know for my nonprofit, if my insurance costs were less uh, for providing health insurance to our employees, that would free up a lot more money for us to pay our workers more, for us to invest more in our programming. 
And so I think anything we can do to offset that astronomical cost would be really beneficial to allowing the arts uh, community to continue to thrive. Thank you. Patricia? Thank you. Um, I support the art industry in Connecticut and funding that is needed in order to ensure its survival. Um, the impact of COVID-19 on our state hasn't yet been fully realized and without under a full understanding of the burden caused by COVID, it's difficult to say with any degree of certainty how aid can be given to the art industry. However, it's clear that art plays a significant role in our communities, in our life, um, and we need to protect its future and we need to ensure that funding is a priority. Thank you. Is Lucy going to chime in? Yes. I'm happy to chime in. Thank yes. you. Um, I, I, first of all, I just wanted to say that this industry, as everyone knows, has been really decimated during this crisis. And it is such a struggle on every single level from the artists, the performers, to the actual institutions themselves that are um, host to these uh, events, whether they're museums or theaters. Um, so we really do need to be focused in on them. Um, I know in appropriations, we've been very focused in the allocation of CARES dollars, and that's one area where I'd really like to see, you know, if there is availability in, in, that, um, in that pot that we would be able to allocate specifically um, to the uh, arts industry here in Connecticut. Um, that is a, you know, it'd, it'd be an option, but I am very cognizant that we need to look at how we can make this work in our budget. I do like the idea of working in a public and private partnership, whether we um, find um, other sort of institutions or companies that would help um, sponsor this going forward that the Connecticut um, state could do a match. Um, and those are sort of the, the two things I'd be focused in on, on how we can make this work. But I really do have to shout out to Michelle. She has uh, talked about probably one of my favorite issues as vice chair of insurance and real estate. I talk constantly about uh, providing better access to health care and public option is one of my, my key issues. And, you know, I see that so many people aren't able to go follow their dreams, follow their passions, either start a new company because of the extraordinary cost of healthcare. Um, I am sure in our state, we have so many artists and actors and people who, and that would just love to be able to follow their, their passion and listen to their soul and be able to um, be a, a thriving artist in our communities, but can't because they have to continue their nine to five job to, um, to get their health care. You know, a family of four can spend $2,000 a month on high deductible plans. So that is just a real impediment to the arts industry overall. So I am uh, fully supporting a public option as well, but we don't have to go into that the whole discussion. Michelle eloquently said it very well. Thank you well, thank so you. much. Thank you. Well, thank you all. I'm sorry that we went over our scheduled time. It was very, very tight. Um, I should probably have tried for a longer period, but uh, thank you so much for your uh, candidates, for your time dedicated to this subject. Um, I think this is very inspiring to hear you so passionately uh, speak about your um, um, involvement with and support of the arts and culture and industry as it is and we look forward to your support in the future. Thank you very much for the five constituents who asked, asked the questions. And um, good luck to everybody. And um, we'll see you on the other side of the election. Thank Appreciate you.